All right, so in this video, I am gonna give you 10 steps to create a online cookie business. So if you're looking to start a cookie business and do it online, this video is gonna be extremely helpful to give you an extremely profitable food business you can start today. All right, so let me jump right into it. I'm gonna give you the 10 steps to start a truly profitable cookie business. Cookies are actually one of our biggest selling products. We do have a bunch of different baked goods and baked products that we sell online, but cookies are something that are hugely margin because they cost so little to make, especially when you're making them um, from scratch and you're using bulk ingredients like sugar and flour, eggs and milk. These are very inexpensive ingredients and you can create some highly profitable business doing this. So. Over the past 12 years, I'll give you some of my advice on what I think is the top 10 most important things for you to know and do when you first start your cookie business online. So let's start off. Number one, you need to find out exactly where are you going to produce these? Where are you gonna make them? Are you gonna rent a commercial kitchen for the production of the cookies on a weekly basis or even a bi-weekly basis? Um, if you're doing it from a home, you can only sell them locally. That would be under the cottage food law. So you can't necessarily sell online if you're working out of your home and creating a, a cookie from there. So one of the great ways to use a commercial kitchen and to use it this way would be to create a way that you can actually create the listing online that you would allow yourself to fulfill the orders on a weekly basis. So what does that mean exactly? So one des designate one specific day of the week where you accumulate orders and you be you make all the products on that day and ship it out on that day. So that way you can take advantage of the opportunity to utilize a commercial kitchen uh, as, as opposed to using your own kitchen at home, which limits where you can sell. Okay, so where are you going to create this uh, food product is super important. If it's not going to be in a commercial kitchen and you're going to actually create in a retail location or retail space or a bakery, then you can definitely do it that way. And of course, that way you could bake, if it's your space, you could bake it when you want and how you want. So number two, incorporate your business. Do not do this as a hobby in a sense where you are going to do it on the side and you think to yourself, I don't necessarily need to incorporate myself as a business. Create a separate business entity. I myself would prefer, um, uh, this is what I've done, I've done with our business, is create an LLC. You can do whatever you wish to do, but my two cents and my opinion would be the best way to start off with is this LLC, uh, which would limit your liability as a company. Okay, so number three, make sure you get a food insurance policy, a food producer's insurance policy. These are gonna be um, an insurance policy that's gonna cover you in case someone gets sick, in case someone has some reaction or some issue pops up. It's gonna allow you to protect your business and protect yourself, but it separates your business and personal belongings. And uh, when it comes to any kind of legality or issues that would pop up, it would be under the business and not necessarily under you as a personal um, <clears throat> potential liability. Number four, master your recipes. If you've got some great ideas for cookies and you've got some great samples and some ideas that you've already created with recipes, great. Make sure you get them down pat. What I mean by that is, is to make sure these are recipes that you can produce in bulk or you can scale these types of recipes up when business picks up and you begin to get a lot of orders online. You have the ability and the capacity in your kitchen, wherever that may be, to produce a lot of them. So cookies that involve real intricate ingredients or a lot of processes, stay away from something that takes too long to make because you've got to also factor in your time. So the most simplistic recipes, as long as you can duplicate them and make them in bulk, you're good to go. Now, what I recommend you do, and this is something we've done, is my, my opinion about cookies and any type of baked good is if I can make a chocolate chip, there's pretty much a big variety that I can make in the same type of recipe. And what I mean by that is, we have some that are blueberry white chocolate, we have some that are like walnut chocolate chip, and so on and so on. These are very simplistic variations of a chocolate chip cookie. But when you're online, the more variety you can offer a customer, the better off you're gonna be. And the more successful you're gonna be selling cookies online. You know, peanut butter, sugar, chocolate chip, that's great. But think outside the box with some of the flavors so it makes your, makes your shop more appealing and makes the variety of cookies that you have more appealing. Okay, so the next one up, uh, that's gonna be number five, is the packaging. 
figure out how are you going to package these. Are they gonna be put onto a cookie platter then uh, shrink wrapped and sealed up with like a kind of a tray, like a cookie tray? Are they gonna be put into a box? Are you just gonna simply put them into a bag? Are they gonna be really hard cookies that you can ship in a bag that won't get broken? Um, are you gonna put it into a special container with different uh, slots and, and spaces for them to be put in intricately? How are you going to package them for them to be shipped? It's different when you produce a cookie that's gonna sit on a retail shelf that's not really gonna be moving around a lot. It's totally different when you're shipping cookies from here to another state. So you might have to experiment slightly and figure out what's gonna be the best for you as far as the packaging. The label, now you've gotta figure out a logo, some type of logo, a branding that you wanna create for your cookie business. So you wanna make sure that you've got a really cool label on there that's gonna uh, show off the brand that you're trying to create with your cookies. So make sure you get a great logo. By the way, if you don't have a logo, if you're not creative, I'll put a link down below. You can check on that. Then Fiverr.com has some fantastic designers that you can get a logo made for about 30 to 35 bucks. It's very inexpensive. I've used them actually, uh, I believe about 13 or 14 times now uh, for different types of logos and, and such that I need. So they've worked out really well. So get yourself a logo and make sure your label definitely has all the information, including the, the count of the cookie, what type of the name of the cookie is, your brand with the logo and everything else you need on there. Number six, you want to open an online cookie business on an existing platform first. Amazon, Etsy, eBay, these are always the three that I talk about all the time because they have a built-in audience. If you create your own website, that is great, but it's very hard to drive traffic to a website. Very hard, it's challenging. Um, so I actually have these stores open on these different platforms and I have traffic going to my website because of the stores I have on Amazon, eBay, and Etsy. So utilizing and tapping into an existing platform is definitely what you want to do right off the bat because they're gonna have the built-in audience for cookies. Uh, baked goods, uh, those types of search words and keywords are gonna be typed into those platforms and people are gonna look on those sites for cookies and that's where you wanna be found. So definitely look into being on those platforms first before your own website. Okay, so number, let me see, number seven, number eight. We also, you wanna make sure that you have a great marketing strategy set up. Now you don't have to be a marketing genius, but I highly recommend on social media that you have some type of presence. You need to create a social media page dedicated to your cookie business online. And whatever your brand name is and such, that needs to be on the top part of the headline of the, every single social media page you create. If it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of them need to encompass, even Pinterest, they need to make sure that your brand name is on there. So having a presence on social media and pushing your links to your products out on those social media platforms and creating content, really basic content. It could even be a simple blog page about your cookies, maybe the type of ingredients, maybe the story about how you started your business. But having a presence on social media is gonna be huge for your online cookie business. So you wanna make sure that you've got a presence on all of them. Number nine, this is so crucial, number nine. You want to make sure that even though you have individual listings on these platforms to sell your cookies, you need to create a subscription business. Now, this isn't something that's gonna take a whole nother drastic thing for you to do. You can literally go on to eBay, for instance, and create a three, six, nine month subscription for your cookies. What that, What is that gonna do is it's gonna create a cash flow. Up front, it's gonna have a cash flow where people are pre-purchasing two or three months or six months or 12 months, however you have it set it up, set up, they're going to be prepaying for this product in advance, so every month you ship it to them. Now, you can go to CrateJoy.com and you can actually create a monthly subscription business where every month if somebody wants to purchase your cookies, it renews and you can ship them out a handful of variety of cookies, but the cash flow that this generates is astronomical. It's one of, been one of the biggest successes for our business being online with a subscription business for cookies, it has been a huge asset for us, okay? So the last one is you need to understand how to ship your cookies. What I mean by that is that you need to understand what it's gonna cost you, how are you actually going to, how are you actually going to package them and ship them? 
you need to experiment with that to figure out what's the safest way to transport your cookies. For us, it's been a cookie platter that we've been able to secure the cookies onto and then that way ship them in a way that they don't get broken. Now, you have never done this before, so you would need to experiment with it, figure out how much it costs, figure out the best packaging and the best way to actually package them in the box. Um, if you have to, even ship some to yourself. That's a great way to do it and you can learn from that. But always remember, to definitely learn how to ship the cookies. It is ultra important because the quality of how they're gonna arrive depends on how you pack them, okay? So keep it really short and sweet as always. I, those are 10 really top tips of, of what I've learned over the past 12 years, creating an online cookie business. So if you're interested in some more videos, take a look at these at the end of the video and we'll see you on the next one. So if you're looking to start your own food business, check out these videos for more resources. Profitable food business ideas, how to start a food truck business. Learn all about cottage food laws to create a home business for selling food. And how to start a catering business from home. These and many more small food business ideas are all at your fingertips when you subscribe to Marketing Food Online.